Okay, hi, this is Dr. Nurse in my office working on some stereochemistry. Um, I'm calling this, this Stereochemistry 2, so you should have watched Stereochemistry 1 before Stereochemistry 2. These, these little videos go along with the booklet that, we, that is up on the web that deals with stereochemistry. And what we were talking about last time is we were dealing with molecules and thinking about what makes a molecule chiral. Okay. So we had these two molecules, and I had interconverted them such that they were the same molecule, because right now they're congruent. But these molecules, each of them individually, are chiral because they're non-superimposable on the mirror image. So I'm going to make the mirror image again. And again, the way you make the mirror image is by taking two groups and switching their positions. Okay, so right now they're mirror images, and I can sit them so that they look like they're mirror images. This molecule is non-superimposable on this molecule. They are both chiral. They are individually chiral. Okay, what I said at the end of the last film is that this irregular shape that makes these different molecules arises from having an asymmetric atom in the molecule. Most asymmetric atoms are carbons. Okay, so we want to write this down. So chirality arises from asymmetric atoms, and there can be different asymmetric atoms, but usually you are dealing with asymmetric carbons. And this is a carbon with four different groups attached. All right, so to draw this idea on the board, okay, I'm going to draw two molecules. I'm going to draw uh, two sugars. These are sugars. So I like to use molecules that are natural products. This is a very simple little sugar. Okay. Now, this is a real molecule as opposed to my sort of fictitious molecules with colors or my, my uh, theoretical molecules. This is a real molecule. Um, it's a glyceraldehyde, which is a type of sugar. This molecule possesses an asymmetric carbon. Where is that asymmetric carbon? The asymmetric carbon is right here where I'm putting the star. Okay. Why is this an asymmetric carbon? because it has four different groups attached. Okay, by different, we don't just mean the first carbon attached. We mean the whole group is different. So this group is a hydrogen, this group is an OH, not drawn very well. This is a CH2OH, which is different from a C double bonded OH. So the difference could occur farther out on the chain. The difference could occur 50 carbons out. This molecule is non-superimposable on its mirror image. It is chiral. So if I draw its mirror image, I would go like this. This is chiral. This is chiral. The technical definition of something being chiral is non-superimposable or non-congruent with mirror image. Okay, so kind of like the traditional way to test chirality is you draw, you draw the molecule, you draw its mirror image, or you crack out your models, you make the molecule, you make its mirror image, and then you try to superimpose them the way I did with my plastic models. You pick one up and you try to get it to occupy the exact same space as the other molecule. You would discover with these that it wouldn't work. You would not be able to superimpose the, each other then. Okay, what I'm going to tell you right now is a little secret that a lot of people don't realize right off the bat. But I can tell you with great certainty 
that all compounds that have that possess one and only one asymmetric carbon are chiral. One of the problems I find students have with this subject is you will throw a molecule up on the board and you'll say, is this molecule chiral? And everyone will be stymied by it. They'll feel they need to crack out models. They need to look at the mirror image. You don't need to look at the mirror image if the molecule has one and only one asymmetric carbon. If it has only one in it, it is chiral. There's no doubt about it. Okay? So these molecules are definitely chiral. Now, what this means is that these two molecules are different from one another. They're not the same molecule because they're not superimposable. And to interconvert them, we have to break bonds. So they're different. Okay? What is their relationship? They have a relationship. The relationship is that they are enantiomers. And you may have heard this term. They're enantiomers. What are enantiomers? Enantiomers are non-superimposable mirror images. Now, in my um, booklet that, I'm making, that I've made for you and that, that's up on the web, I have all these definitions. But it's very important in stereochemistry to know the definitions very, very, very well. So we're almost saying that, you know, saying they're enantiomers is almost like saying they're chiral. Because it is like saying they're chiral. Because you notice we're using the same definition. But this, I want you to realize this is a relationship term. So I say, this is the enantiomer of this. This is the enantiomer of that. Seven. This is chiral. That's a, chiral is a term for an individual molecule. This is chiral, but they are enantiomers. So it's sort of like saying, I'm Dr. Nurse, right? And my son is filming this right now, and he's my son. That's our relationship, right? Or sisters, our relationship term. But when you say it is chiral, that only refers to the individual molecule. But you use the relationship to define the chirality. But I want you guys to take a shortcut. If something has an asymmetric carbon, I want you to say it's chiral. Just say it's chiral. So, ending up this little mini film, this little mini video. I'm going to draw molecule, two molecules on the board and you can decide whether or not they're chiral. So say I had this okay and then say I have this and the question is is it chiral? Okay, so think, the number one problem people have with stereochemistry is deciding quickly if something's chiral. Okay, you would focus in on the carbon that appears to have the greatest number of different groups. Now, if I draw my H in carefully here, the H is here. H is here. Okay. Does this carbon here have four different groups attached to it? It does, because it has a bromine, it has a hydrogen, it has a methyl, and it has a propyl. A propyl is different from a methyl. So this is an asymmetric carbon. When we go down here, this carbon has a hydrogen, a bromine, and two ethyls. Is it chiral? Realize there are lots of molecules that are not chiral. This molecule is not chiral. It has a plane of symmetry. It's symmetrical. Again, chiral molecules are so asymmetric that they're non-superimposable on their mirror image. Okay? So this one's chiral. All right, so what could you say about it? You can say, this is chiral. Then you can say, there's another molecule that is the mirror image of that molecule. And I could draw that right now. That's the other molecule. This molecule is not the same as that molecule. It's not superimposable. But you don't have to go through the whole business with the models. As soon as you establish you have one and only one asymmetric carbon, you know it's chiral. This is chiral, this is chiral. What is their relationship? Their relationship is that they're an antiomer. Okay, so in the next um, video, we're gonna, I'm going to discuss how you name these, and then we're going to go into two centers, two asymmetric carbons in the same molecule. Okay, 
So that's the end, and again, go to Stereochemistry 3.